Hi guys, Aaron Clark here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to have a look at some render settings for V-Ray with Rhino. So we've got a very simple scene here. We've got a background, uh, background plane, we've got a ring and we've got a gem. And I've already got some materials applied to those. We can see those there. We've got diamond and some 18 karat yellow gold. And I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to hit the reset button. And so that's just going to change everything back to default settings for uh, for V-Ray. So this is what you'll probably start off with if you're um, starting starting from scratch, starting up anew. And let's just hit render and we'll see what happens. So this is going to use a progressive type of render. This video is also going to look at CPU rendering. I'm not going to touch on GPU rendering. Uh, for me, I prefer CPU rendering. And we can see that it's slowly sort of starting to resolve there. And once it gets to a certain level, that's probably going to stop and it stopped there. But you can see it's quite grainy around the sides here. So let's optimize our settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is if we have a look at this image, we've got quite a lot of white space on either side of the ring. So I'm going to change our uh, render output. I'm going to change that from uh, sort of a widescreen to like a 4.3 picture that's going to give us 800 by 600 and that's just going to sort of crop a bit of this out and make the jewelry a bit more prominent in the image. The other thing I'm going to do is have a look at the uh, the environment and that is under here and I'm just going to change that to uh, sort of default box six blurred works quite well. I will bump up the brightness of that. Okay, so if we hit this H, we can get a history uh, fly out here. We'll switch that on. And let's hit render and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're still a little bit dark there. I'm just going to stop that and let's bump that up to maybe five. Okay, that's a bit brighter there. That's That's okay for now. So I'll let that chug away and it's taken its time. Taking its time. We're still quite grainy up in, in up in these areas. If we mouse over it's sort of gonna clear up where the where the mouse cursor is. And This should start to saying this is the this is the level that we're happy with and it'll stop the render soon. Okay, that stopped there. And okay, so there we go, we've got uh, 39.8 seconds. Okay. So that's pretty slow and also like I said we're quite grainy in, in some of these areas here. So let's have a look at uh, some of these options. So we're happy with the render, we've got CPU, we can turn progressive off. And that's the first thing we're gonna do. Let's push render. So this is gonna give us more of a traditional sort of bucket rendering. Okay, and, and we're done. Uh, so we can see that we've gone from 39.8 seconds down to eight seconds. So that is a very decent, uh, very decent saving. Um, but we've still got quite a bit of grain around here and you know eight seconds we can we can do better than that We can get better quality and we can make this faster So let's come over here and we'll have a look at some of these other settings So the ray tracing in we will come back and visit this but for now. Let's just point that on point one and We'll see what difference that makes This sort of refers to some of that noise limit. And we've got 4.9 seconds. So that's quicker. Our quality isn't really that improved. In fact, if we set this as A and if we set this as B, we actually see that we're more grainy by playing with that setting, that noise limit setting. Okay. Well, the big one, the big one that we want to change here is in the global illumination. And you can see that we've got primary rays set to brute force. And what brute force does is it looks at every single part of the picture and fires all of these virtual photons at it and gets a reading. Um, but you know these parts of the picture 
aren't as important as these parts, but it treats everything as equal. So it's still calculating this area up here as much as it would calculate this area over here. We're going to change that to irradiance map. Now we'll just leave everything the same and we'll hit render. Okay, and you can see straight away we're a lot cleaner. And we've also gone from 4.9 down to 3.8 seconds. Remember, we started off with 39, close to 40 seconds. Um, and like I said, if we set the new one as A, we can see how much cleaner that is. So cleaner and faster. Okay, what else can we do? So that's the global illumination. Um, that's like I said. That's that's kind of the big one. I'm going to hit this uh, this button up here, and I'm going to go into the anti-aliasing filter. Now, by default, it's set to Lanxos. Personally, I prefer Catmull ROM, and if you watch, it just gives a little bit more of a sharpness to the image. Let's let's hit render. It will take slightly longer to do. And let's save that. So we've got 3.8 to 4 seconds. Uh, again, if I set this to B and sort of zoom in here. So this is with the Catmull ROM uh, anti-aliasing. And this is sort of the default Lanxos over here. And as I sort of move that, you can sort of see that it's a lot sort of sharper. It's got a little bit more bite. So for me, I prefer that sharpness, especially when it comes to gems. It just sort of gives them a bit more, you know, a bit more crisp, crispness. Okay, and we're at four seconds, so that's looking good. The other thing to do is, those are the main things that we've done now. We might want to come down to our global illumination and maybe change the minimum rate to minus 10. We might get a slight time benefit. Uh, when I say slight, that was down to 3.3 seconds. So again, a very decent saving. And quality hasn't deteriorated at all there. Um, if we come down to our light cache, which is our secondary rays, we can drop that down to maybe 500. And we'll see if that gives us any benefit there. And again, we're not sacrificing any quality that I can see. And we are from 3.3 seconds down to 2.5 seconds. Um, and again, you can start tweaking these a little bit more if you want and start saying, well, maybe let's have a look at 250 and we, I'm sure we can get quicker and quicker. Keep an eye on your quality. Make sure that that's not suffering too much. Um, that was down to 250 and let's save that. And we're from 2.5 to 2.3 seconds. So we're starting to get to the point of diminishing returns here. Now, one of the... Um, one of the other things, sorry, is our maximum sub subdivisions. That's on 12. We can drop that down to 6. And save that. So not much difference there, actually. 2.3. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's bump that back up to 12. You know, it's... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it on 12. If it's not giving us any, any benefit, then sort of the, the higher number, the, the better. Maybe in more complex scenes, you might see a bit of a difference, but we'll leave that on 12 for now. Now, one of the things that is going to slow down rendering times is um, like a matte, uh, a matte metal. So if uh, a highly polished metal is gonna be pretty quick, if we drop the reflection down to say 0.8, and hit render. Then we can see that that is slowing down from 2.3 to 3.6 seconds. And the other thing you can see is it's starting to get a little bit grainy here. So if you want to sort of eliminate some of that, that noise, uh, just come back into your settings and the noise limit here, which is 0.1, this is one of the first things we, we messed with, 0.1, change that to 0.01. Um, Again, it's going to be slower, but we will get a much nicer result there. So just be aware of that when you're looking at sort of brushed metals. And 
Okay, so we've gone from 3.6 to 11.4 seconds. So that's quite a big jump. If we set the 3.6 as A and B, then you say, although it's jumping, we are getting a much cleaner, cleaner rendering. So it's sort of at that point where you need to decide what's more important for you. If 0.01 is a bit slow for you, try 0.05. You know, it's a little bit noisier, but we are much quicker. We're sort of down to 3.6 seconds. And uh, it's just sort of playing with those values there and, and seeing what works for you. Again, we're a little bit noisier, but you might decide that. Um, you might decide that that is acceptable for what you want. And again, you can play with 0.02 and see what the noise looks like there. Again, we're getting better quality in our in our metal, and we are at 6.9 seconds. So between 0.05 and 0.02 in the noise limit, um, we sort of we sort of doubling doubling the time required, but we are also getting a better quality. So those are the sort of things that you need to toss up and decide what's more important for you. Okay, that's a quick look at some of the settings here. There are other things like um, uh, denoiser settings and things like that. I'm not going to go into that today. There's also the whole other side of GPU rendering. And again, I'm not going to touch on that. This is mainly just for getting your CPU settings um, dialed in. Okay, hopefully that's helped. Like I said, we managed to get down to 2.3 seconds there with a very nice clean result down from... 39 close to 40 seconds so that's a that's a big time saving and a much better quality saving as well okay thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one